We can either imagine a world in which our elected officials court and value the votes, suggestions, and voices of us in the recovery community, or we can make it a reality. Take a minute. Think of all of the people impacted by addiction. This includes an estimated 23 million people living in long-term recovery across the country, family members in recovery, families of loss, people who use drugs, the harm reduction community, individuals in the justice system, and many others. Imagine the impact locally in our communities if every single one of us was registered to vote, approached candidates running for office, and as a community stated that this is what it is going to take to earn our vote. According to a post-election survey of 693 people in the recovery community, there are signs that our community is a growing voting block and are already civically engaged. But are we viewed that way by those running for office? In just that small sample of a survey, 96.7% of us reported that we were registered to vote and 41.5% had volunteered their time or donated to a candidate running for office. There are many civic engagement activities that we can get involved in year-round, including voter registration and voter restoration campaigns, candidate engagement and education, and get out the vote activities in order to strengthen our community's collective voice. Let's take a look at some components of the vote recovery campaign. Resources for all these components can be found at the Recovery Voter Hub by going to www.recoveryvoices.com slash vote. Issue voting is not new. Some examples of issue voting that may come to mind are the environment, productive rights, or marriage equality. Many candidates running for office adopt a platform that speaks directly on these issues and to those voters. An organized voting bloc around recovery issues has the potential to have an impact on future decisions made on behalf of our community regarding health care, equitable access to services, criminal justice reform, and more. When it comes to addiction and recovery, decisions made by public officials mean access to life-saving services, community support, funding, and quality of care for all. These issues cannot be ignored. Take a moment to consider the issue of recovery influencing your vote as opposed to a political party. This may be a new way to look at who you will cast a vote for. But recent polling suggests many voters in and out of recovery are open to this idea. According to a recent poll, 1,172 registered likely voters were asked if they would consider a candidate of a different party if they had an attractive stance on recovery. Of those 1,172 individuals, only 23% of voters responded no. The results of this poll tell us that a plurality of likely voters would consider recovery as an issue vote as opposed to political party or stance of candidates on other issues. Recovery is a serious issue, and it is time that our community holds our elected officials or those running for office accountable for their stances, promises, and decisions made for those impacted by addiction and recovery. For tools and resources, visit the Recovery Voter Hub at www.recoveryvoices.com slash vote. Vote recovery will mean something different to each potential recovery voter as we all have a number of issues that inspire us. Vote recovery is not about telling anyone who to vote for or what to support. That decision is each of ours to make. Taking some time to dive deeper into issues you care about can help you to effectively communicate that to anyone running for office. The Recovery Advocacy Project works with organizers all across the country to host Vote Recovery Town Halls, where voters in the recovery community share the issues they keep front and center when heading to the polls. Once your issue research is complete, you can then move on to researching those running and how they're trying to earn your vote. In a post-election survey of the recovery community, 51.7% researched how all their local candidates would vote on addiction or mental health issues. 29.4% had researched some candidates, but not all. 
and 18.9% had not conducted any research on their candidates. An informed voter is a powerful voter. It is up to every one of us to look at the issues that impact those struggling with addiction, people in recovery, as well as family members and allies. There are so many issues that affect us as a recovery community to consider before voting. After we have done our part to dive deeper into issues, it's time for us to open communications with those running for office and their campaign staff. This can be a beginning in potentially earning your support as a voter. Take some time to research what local positions are being filled in any upcoming elections and who the candidates are. You can do some of this at the Vote Recovery website, but much of the information will have to be researched through your local election offices and websites. It is helpful to ask ourselves a few questions in this component of vote recovery. Are candidates running for office and your elected officials making decisions without you, the recovery voter, having your voice heard? If the answer is yes, then you can change that. Have they answered publicly on the issues you care about? Are your issues addressed on their websites or campaign literature? If the answer is no, then they can change that. Remember, candidates should be courting your vote and your support, so it's important to share what is important to you and engage them in conversation. In a post-election survey of the recovery community, 74.1% felt like candidates did not do enough to earn their vote, specifically when it came to addiction recovery or mental health. You, the recovery voter, can be an important resource to those running for office and their campaign staff. There is room for you to educate them on what is happening regarding addiction in your community and provide them with ideas and solutions. We encourage all of you to identify as a recovery voter and commit to vote while keeping the recovery issues that are most important to you in mind in each and every election, whether it is voting for local school board members, town councils, or presidential races. Registering people in recovery to vote as well as their family members and supporters is something that can make a difference in each of our communities and something we can all do. In a post-election survey of the recovery community, 47.7% of respondents said they helped to register other people in recovery to vote. Vote recovery is also about voter restoration for anyone who may have a criminal record. Fighting for the right to restore everyone's right to vote invites citizenship and civic engagement back into the lives of those that have been affected. Each state has different right to vote laws for people with felony convictions. Many people who have lost their right to vote may not know they can restore that right. Please take a moment to visit the Vote Recovery site to check your state's right to vote law. Whether you have your voice heard by registering to vote, engaging a candidate running for office at a town hall meeting, or advocating for the voting rights of all, these civic engagement activities strengthen us as an organized voting bloc that all candidates running for office should take seriously. For tools and resources, visit the Recovery Voter Hub at www.recoveryvoices.com vote.